In this video, I will tell you about a technique for evaluating determinants known as row or column expansion. It is also known as expansion by cofactors or minors. And it is also known as the Laplacian expansion. For three by three determinants, it's equivalent to what we've been calling the Indian approach. So it will look very familiar. Here is how it works. It actually works for any row or column. So let me first show you what will happen if we chose to work with the first row. According to this expansion, this n by n determinant equals the sum of n terms, one for each entry in the chosen row. And then for each entry in the chosen row, let's say this one, you have to do the following. You have to mentally cross out the row that it's in, and it'll be the same first row for each one of these entries, and also the column that it's in. And that will leave you with an n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix. Yes, it's usually broken up into two parts, but you can put it together. And this n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrix, or rather its determinant, is known as the minor or the cofactor associated with that entry. So what you will do is you will evaluate that smaller determinant, multiply it by the associated entry, and add all of them together. But you will not add them directly. You will add them with alternating signs. It will go like this. The first entry will come with a plus sign, the next one with a minus, the next with a plus, the next with a minus, and the final one with a plus. So let me first illustrate this with a 4 by 4 determinant. We won't evaluate the determinants themselves, we'll just write down the expansion. Let's once again choose to work with the first row and remind ourselves of the signs that we will use. Plus, minus, plus, minus. The first row always starts with a plus and then the signs alternate. So, according to this expansion technique, this 4 by 4 determinant will be a sum of four terms. The first term will equal 3 times the following determinant. Let's mentally cross out the row and the column of that entry. And as you can see, we're left with this smaller 3 by 3 determinant. Let me write it down. Okay, next comes this entry. Even though it's zero, which means that eventually this term will drop out, we'll write it down for completeness. This one comes with a minus sign, minus zero. And let's see what the cofactor is. Once again, we have to cross out the first row and now the second column and take a careful look at what we're left with. And I will now write this three by three determinant here. Okay, next is the eight, which comes with a plus sign. Okay, and let's find the corresponding cofactor. All right, it's this one right here. Take a careful look at it and let me now write it down. Okay, and what's the final term? The final term comes from this two. It comes with a minus sign, so we'll have a minus two. And now let's figure out the corresponding cofactor. All right, and there it is. Take a very careful look at it. And now let me write it down. Okay, I will leave it up to you to make sure that this identity is correct, that this determinant actually equals this sum. But that's not the point. The point is to just show this expansion. Now, when would this method be helpful? Well, obviously it would be helpful if the matrix contains a row or a column with a lot of zeros. This matrix had one zero in the first row, and so this term drops out and there is less work to do. But when there are a lot of zeros, there could be a lot less work to do. And that's pretty much when you will use this method. Now, as I mentioned before, this works with any row and any column, not just first. But then you have to pay really close attention to the signs. So let me now erase some of the things on the board and then come back 
and address that question. If you want to do the expansion on any row or column, everything works pretty much the same way. You evaluate the cofactors, multiply them by the corresponding entries, and then add them together with alternating signs. The only thing that might be different is the sign you start with. And one good way to know what sign to start with is to remember that odd rows and columns start with a plus, and even rows and columns start with a minus. For example, if we were to evaluate this determinant by expanding it on the second column, as I'm about to do with this determinant, the pattern would go minus plus, minus plus, and so forth. And that's one good way to determine the sign. There is another good way to determine the sign, and that's to realize that the sign associated with every cofactor is predetermined by the location of the corresponding entry. If the row of the entry and the column of the entry add up to an even number, the sign's a plus. Otherwise, it's a minus. For this entry right here, it is in row 3 and column 4. 3 plus 4 add up to 7, and so the sign is a minus. So the sign can be determined according to this chessboard pattern with plus signs on the main diagonal. And that's another good way to determine the sign of each term in the expansion. So what I'm about to do now is evaluate this determinant and not so much evaluate as expand this determinant on the second column. And I will do it without saying any words. I'll just write down the numbers. And that will be the end of this video. Oh, <laughs> 